Hello, you are watching a Hyperdrive Pictures effects video tutorial. Normally we release comedic narrative videos every week, but since it's the holidays, everybody's going home to see their families for the next couple weeks and we can't get together to make those videos, so we're going to space out our content with a couple of video tutorials here and there. First video tutorial is going to be on the zoom out video that we did last week, and I'm actually going to show you the effect instead of right out explaining it because it's kind of hard to explain. We set out to make this video to make no sense. So if you watched this and had no idea what's going on, good job. Mission accomplished on our part. So you can see here we've got a very slow controlled zoom going on in this bedroom scene right here. And just when you think you might know what's going on, a little bit of distortion happens. A heads-up display appears and you find out this entire scene has been happening on a flat screen TV in my friend Ryan Evans' living room. It's also my living room where we're roommates. So this is pretty easy to film. So we just did it at home. But basically the concept is a very slow zoom that continues through a TV screen and out to another setting. But more importantly, what I'm going to teach you to do in this tutorial is how to track video onto a TV screen. Now that might be something you might do for a commercial or a scene where you know, you've know you got your camera moving around either through a zoom or you're panning left and right or you're not even on a tripod, you're doing this handheld, but you want to really lock something into the TV to make it look realistic because that motion, that bit of motion adds a little bit of um, complexity to a scene and makes it look that much more real. So we're going to get started. I did all of this in After Effects and I've actually done a little bit of work for us already by putting two layers. One is the bedroom layer, the scene happening in the bedroom, and then other is the TV layer, which is scene happening with my friend Ryan watching the TV. So I'll explain the screen in a second, but first we're going to start with the bedroom layer. What you want to do is you want to position your elements in the timeline to where the TV layer begins just as the zoom ends in the bedroom layer. So that way the zoom picks up in the TV and it, the motion remains consistent. So you see right about here the zoom ends, but right before it, the zoom is continuing. So this is the magic point in our timeline, about 58, 59 seconds in. So I'm going to go to the TV layer now. And you're going to notice we've got a lot of green with these four dots. Basically this is an image I put onto the TV. The green screen is to help us mask or key around my friend Ryan's shoulder here, and the dots are to help us get some tracking data for putting the video right in the TV where we want it. So you need to basically get this image on your TV somehow, maybe through a DVD or your gaming console, or your TV might have a way of storing images already. I used a PS3 and then just used its images, pictures, feature, and then displayed it, and that was it. So we're going to get started. First thing you want to do is track these really handy tracking points. Go to Layer, New, Null Object. You notice I already have a null object. You can just ignore it for now. Then click your TV layer. Go to Tracker Controls, Track Motion. We've got Position and Scale. And our target is Null 6, which is correct and you want to pick the points that are as far away as possible because the farther away they are from each other the more accurate your information is like so can analyze can analyze forward and there we go while it does that let me explain how we were able to get the zoom so smooth because that's a very important part of this um, tutorial and this effect we weren't actually zooming by hand. You might be able to get away with this on the servo zoom if you use a very steady hand or maybe some sort of tool to keep it pressed down on the camera at the same speed. But actually, the camera we use is called the Canon XHA1. Love that camera to death. And it's got a really cool feature where you can set points on your focus and zoom, hit a button, and then it'll snap to that point at certain speeds. So I can set the computer to set a keyframe that's on one end zoomed all the way in. Then on the other end, zoomed all the way out, set the speed to as slow as it'll go, hit a button, and then when I hit action, it just starts zooming. I don't even have to keep my hand on the camera. I can just keep my hand on the tripod if I need to make any adjustments up, down, left, or right. But I didn't even really need to do that while the zoom was going on. And then I did the same thing for this scene with the TV. And basically the nice thing about that is that without my hand on the camera, there aren't any unnecessary jitters and the zooming speed remains consistent. Now that I've got that out of the way, I'm not actually going to make you watch me analyze this entire scene because I've actually done so in no one. So we're just going to apply it right there so that way you know how to do a motion track. But 
all that information is there, so we don't even need null 6. So let's just get rid of null 6 for now. We have everything we need in null 1. Next thing we're going to do is turn our bedroom layer back on. I'm going to use the corner pin effect, which is an effect, distort corner pin. And then we're just going to place this, this, this. Basically, we're mirroring the corners of the TV in here. And you might notice that it's already been kind of blocked into the zoom. That's because I forgot to show you a step. But it's that it is targeted to null 1. So I've got all that tracking data in null 1. You're just going to go to this tool, pick whip over to null 1. Then your parent is to null 1. And then as it zooms out on the TV, so does your bedroom layer. I'm going to zoom all the way out because even though we pick the corners, sometimes the other corners zoom in. So then we're just going to go into the corner pin, modify them a bit more. A pixel or two that way, and a pixel or two this way. Okay, so that's good. And the way it's staying in there is because we've got it parented to null one, in case you missed that step. That's basically the powerful part of the effect. That's how you would track it into your TV. And it doesn't have to be a zoom out. It could be, like I said before, a uh, handheld motion in a scene. Or maybe you just move the camera left, right, up, or down on a tripod and you want to make it comped into that motion, tracked into that motion. So let's go earlier on. Next thing we want to do is key it out because since we've overlapped the corners, it doesn't really look like it's in the TV screen. It looks like it's pasted above everything, including Ryan's shoulder. So let's make a key. We're going to duplicate the TV layer, call the second a key layer, put it above the bedroom layer. I'm going to go into effect, keying, key light. Eyedrop tool, pick the green. And let's finesse this key a little bit. Well, first of all, it needs to select the green. There we go. Let's go into screen mat. Then inside of here, screen mat, let's clip the black sum. Let's clip the white sum. Let's clip the black a little bit more. We want this to be completely solid black. There we go. And let's uh, make the screen softness one pixel. Back to final result, we've got a really nice key here and as we move it looks like it's really a part of the TV as it zooms out. Now if you're paying very close attention you remember those tracking points we used they're still there. You might normally want to use the mask tool and keyframe it to go with the zoom but we've already got this great um, tracking information that we can use to get rid of it so let's do that. We're gonna go to new solid make a new black solid called a mat and then we're going to turn off its opacity there, then draw a square mask like so. That would cover up our dots. Then we're going to parent it to the exact same null as our bedroom layer. And as we zoom out, you'll see so does our box. So check this out. I'm going to use the box to get rid of the video containing those points on the key layer. So we're going to put it right above the key layer, then go to the key layer, click on alpha inverted mat, and voila, those points are gone. And since the mat is tracked with the same null as the bedroom layer and the key layer via the zoom, those dots are gone consistently and we don't mess with the edges of our TV. So, one last thing before we call part one of this tutorial done. If you go back to the bedroom layer, click on corner pin, you'll notice that the edges are actually outside of the composition window, which might be okay to you, but to me, that means I'm losing precious, precious resolution because there's video here that we're not seeing, and within here, it's getting stretched. So. I'm going to set keyframes for everything right there, and I'm going to go back about 12 frames. And 
and then zoom in. Put these right on the edges so we're getting all of our video and all of our resolution back. So basically what's going to happen is the video is going to look like it's filling out the entire frame and then about 12 frames before it's going to warp and skew a little bit and then it's going to keep on zooming out within the TV. And the skewing might look weird for now, but don't worry, that's something we're going to fix in part two of the tutorial, which will most likely be not next week, but the week after. Again, no promises because we are all out for the holidays, but definitely by the week after next, we'll have the second part of this tutorial. So, if you haven't already seen it, you should definitely check out the zooming video. It's on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash hyperdrivepics. Please be sure to subscribe, it really helps us out, and you get to see the part two of the video when it's released, and you also get to see more of these narrative comedy videos every week when we're not out for the holidays. You can see the video right here, you can subscribe right here, you can check out our Twitter and Facebook right there, follow us there, and you'll get behind the scenes pictures and information on shoots as they're happening. It's pretty cool. And again, thanks for watching. I'm Steven Zarita, and be sure to stay tuned. Bye.